again everyone thanks again for tuning into sin's workshop hope you're all having a wonderful day all right today we're going to be talking about magic dark and strange by kelly powell this is a book um i received as you can see our i received it from the publisher um it was unsolicited i didn't ask for it it's so funny i came home one day here's a box i'm like oh box i opened it i'm like oh box i got like a bunch of books and i'm like i need a request for these I must, I'm, I gotta be signed up somewhere for free books. So this is one of them. Um, finally got around to reading it. It was published late October of last year. And I have to say, you know, for a book this short, um, I've been having this problem a lot lately where I'm reading books that are short and I think, oh, it'll be a breeze, right? Especially because they sound, you know, really interesting. But it was a little bit of a letdown for me. I found it a little um, underdeveloped, a, a, a tad boring, and unfortunately. I think the biggest issue for me was I kept forgetting that this was a fictional world. And I've already forgotten. I wrote it down in my notes and... As usual, I don't have my notes on me because I'm in a little bit of a rush. Um, <laughs> gotta get to work soon. So, here, here we go. Invercarn. Invercarn is the name of the world that we're in. It's the town of Invercarn. I kept forgetting the name of it. Um, I kept forgetting where I was when I was reading this because, and this isn't really a, a necessarily a bad thing, her world building, you know, her details are very spot on. But it was so Victorian, England, and I kept forgetting where I was supposed to be, and I just kept imagining England. You know, that's good on the one hand because it does set up the atmosphere, but when you're building a world, you should be able to establish that it is its own world. You can draw similarities, of course, from history. People do it all the time. I just read Incendiary. She drew inspiration uh, from the Spanish Inquisition uh, to set the foundation of her world. And you see it, but you're not thinking, oh yeah, this is definitely the Span this is Spain during this time. You know, you're able to differentiate between the two. You're not able to when you're reading this novel. And at times, I was a little confused with her magic. So for an hour of her life. It cost her an hour of her own life. She can bring someone back from the dead for an hour. It's interesting in the beginning of the novel, you know, they're at night, they're trying to be secretive. You're almost wondering, do people know she has this gift? Um, is this a secret? But then you start, you know, as you're reading, you're starting to be introduced to other elements of fantasy. So I really wish the fantasy element of the story had taken a strong precedence because I was a little confused. I was just like, so wait, everyone has, there are certain people who have magic, you know. She meets a guy, he has time magic, which is really cool. He can slow down time, but it costs him his memories. And that's something I did like from the novel. When we got to see the magic, you really weren't interested in the magic. I just wish there had been more of it. And I like how their magics come with a cost. It's not just free. It has a personal cost to them. I liked that. I thought it was interesting. However, I was just bored. It's supposed to be, you know, the bone meat the Bone Witch meets Sherlock Holmes. And that's why I was interested, because I like Sherlock Holmes' stories. You know, he's a he's a sexist, and I totally see it. Um, but <laughs> I like this mystery. I like when you're solving a mystery. I like stories like that. But the mystery here, uh, I just, I wasn't able to really connect to it. It just felt very two-dimensional, very on the surface. Um, you know, she's supposed to be digging up a body because there's this pocket watch that is supposed to 
bring someone back to life permanently, you know? Her boss wants it. When she digs up the grave, the person in the grave, they come back to life. And they're a kid. They're, they're not much older than these than these characters, probably 16, 17. And they're trying to solve the mystery of where is this pocket watch for once? What kind of magic brought this kid back to life? Who killed this kid to begin with? You know, there's a lots of pieces that they're trying. And they all intermingle. There's no doubt about it. You definitely see, sorry, how they intermingle. But it's just, it feels very underdeveloped. It feels kind of rushed. It just feels, it feels, here's the strange thing. It feels both rushed and slow at the same time, if that makes sense. I say that because I wasn't really able to get engaged with it. I wish there would, had been more detail to developing the mystery, a little bit more history, especially when you're building this world. I think adding more history and context would have helped the storytelling so much more. I think it would have grounded me in the reader, in the story, sorry. I think it would have grounded me in the story more. But, I mean, I just, it bored me. Maybe that's why I felt like the pacing was slow. Because it bored me in the end. I was just, it's not that long. It's not. It's only uh, 200 pages. And it took me, 200 pages should take me like that. Yeah, I can read 200 pages in an hour. Um, when it comes to a good book, this took me days to read. Days. Um, I've literally forced myself, like, okay, let me see where this is going. Because it's 200 pages. Why am I going to just stop reading it? But, you know, I just wasn't that engaged with the storytelling. I wasn't really engaged with the characters either. You know, I do think that this main protagonist, Catherine Daly, you know, she has... A lot of unusual circumstances you know her family's on the farm she moved to the city to make money to help support the farm because it's not doing too well and she works in a newspaper lots of interesting elements I just felt like she had no personality the guy guy um, who works at the um, clock shop you know she gets his help I couldn't imagine him I can't put a face to him at all and I can't put a face to her either, other than this other than this cover. I can't use my imagination. I can't draw on the details because I feel like, thinking back, I don't think there were details. Um, Owen, her boss, Bridget, I just felt like they were not captivating at all. I felt like they were not engaging at all. I I didn't like them. I did not. Um I did not like them. Why but if that's not that's not true. I did like them, I guess. I just couldn't connect to them. I didn't feel for them. I wasn't invested in them at all because they have no life. And the, the romance is developed, I'm like it's obvious by the context that, you know, Catherine and Guy are going to be romantic interest. But I just didn't feel it. It just didn't come across off the pages, unfortunately. So this was Magic, Dark, and Strange. It was... I mean, I'd give it two stars, unfortunately. It wasn't particularly amazing. It didn't blow me away. Um, I think it's interesting and this is definitely a novel I would pass on to other readers because maybe it'll find, you know, it's forever home. Maybe it's going to find someone who loves it as it deserves. But for me, I was just not feeling it, unfortunately. Um, it underwhelmed me greatly. So I'm just going to pass this book off to another reader. I'll probably donate it 
or put it up in a giveaway as just, you know, here, here's a book. If you like it, great. If you don't, you know, no hard feelings, pass it on to someone else or donate it yourself, you know? I host a lot of giveaways on my Instagram page um, where I both buy books and give away books. So, you know, never trash a book. Just give it away if you don't like it. There's always someone out there who has different interests in you and different tastes. You're probably going to like things that you don't like. So once again, Magic Dark and Break by Kelly Powell gets two, oh, yeah, two and a half um, out of five stars. If you want to go ahead and purchase the book, please purchase the book off of bookshop.org or your local bookstore or online book retailer. If money's tight, please check out the book from your local library. And on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.